Okay, I'm sending it live. Hello and uh, welcome to this morning's public uh, spaces uh, group. Um, can I kick off with um, apologies uh, for absence, please? I've had apologies from Alison Peters and councillors Perkin and Reynolds and um, Mike Knowles was attentive, so I'm assuming as he's not here, that's also apologies. OK, thank you. OK, um, has any members got any declarations of interest they'd like to make uh, based on the agenda we've got today? OK, so I'm now going to move on to the minutes of the last meeting held on the 24th of September. Um, has anyone got anything um, they need to say about the minutes from the last meeting? Okay. That's Cap Councillor Saunders. Oh, sorry. I'm terribly sorry. You may have to um, just interject. There's only um, a few of us today. If you just interject, because I've got lots of other screens up at the moment. Yeah, go, right. go ahead. Okay, go thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Eddie. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, it was just a matter of uh, matter arising um, under um, item 70 minutes of the, the previous meeting. Um, there was discussion about a further uh, bench at the Westbrook. I, I understand Councillor Jackson and um, uh, Mrs Stoner from the um, Westbrook, uh, Friends of the Westbrook, have had discussions about this and I think would be able to bring, bring another proposal forward. But I wanted to ask whether there was funding available within the public spaces budget for a further bench or whether um, Councillor Jackson needed to look to her, mem her Swale members grant to, to pay for a bench. I don't know if the town clerk can tell us. Looking at the, um, uh, the budget sheet, what was the cost of the bench before? Um, I. I can just advise that we've got just under £600 left in earmark reserves for benches specifically. Um, I'll just check. The actual bench was £640 and um, installation costs because um, we put a base so that amounted to another 400. So we're looking at about a thousand pounds for another bench. So we've got 600 pounds in earmark reserves for benches. OK, so we can probably afford the bench, but we may need um, Councillor Jackson to see if she can fund the base. OK, can I uh, propose that we we set aside that, the, the committee sets aside that money then and um, on the basis that Councillor Jackson will do that. Yeah, um, I'll second that. I'm, I'm happy with that too. <clears throat> OK, right. So I'm going to propose that we accept the minutes. Can I have a second for that, please? I'll second those, Councillor. Thank, thank you, Mr. Williams. OK. Right. So I'm going to move on to the Highways Improvement Fund. And what I wanted to do here, I am going to do my best to share this. I thought it might be better to share my screen screen as we as we go through this. So let's give this a go. Um, dun, 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 that's what I want to share. How are we doing? Can you can you see that? Yep. Yep, I can see that. Thank you. So I thought we'd go through uh, the list. Obviously, number one is going through the JTB. Please interject if there's uh, something I'm getting wrong, because I do want to try and update this hip as well. Um, and that goes, is it the JTB? In December, uh, Councillor Saunders, that, that that goes to. Uh, well, the the state of play with this is that um, the 
officers, uh, Ryan Scheel and Sarah Jane Elcock, have said that they would um, put this forward for um, KCC's, but yeah, put it in for consideration for KCC's budget for for next year. So it's not coming back to um, the, the uh, JTB. I don't know if um, Alan Blackburn can tell us what the budget process is at KCC and whether we, whether I should be uh, chasing uh, Ryan and uh, Sarah Jane about this. Uh, thank you, Julian. I, I, I'm not aware that um, there's any particular uh, budget for this type of work specifically, um, but um, the, the, I know that the two officers you mentioned are both looking at it. Uh, it's not on the JTB item for the next JTB, which is 7th of December. Um, but I know that they're working on it, so uh, I, I can't give you any update at the moment other than uh, it's in course. I think at the moment they're pretty tied up with uh, a lot of schemes that have all come their way because of sort of central government funding. So they are quite sort of uh, blitzed, if you like, with uh, an awful lot of work at one time. But um, yeah, they are looking at it. That's all I can add to it at the moment. Is there any way, Alan, that we can find out if they're on the list or, or check that it's on the list? Um, not that I can do straight away, but I can I can ask Ryan for some sort of update and we can just add it into the minutes if you like. Yeah, that'll, that'll be good. It's, it, it, it's just good to know that um, it is on their list. You know, um, we're, we're saying it is. I just want to be want to be sure uh, that it is on their list of schemes that they're, that they're working on. I'll, I'll email, email him straight after the meeting uh, and just say, can you give us a bit of an update? And then uh, assuming we get it back, I mean, Ryan's fairly quick at replying. Uh, assuming we get some sort of reply back, we can add that into the minutes of this meeting for today, if you like. Lovely. Thanks, Alan. OK, um, looking at um, lines two, three, four and five, um, Councillor Saunders might be able to uh, help a little bit with this one, but my understanding of these is that they we're leaving them on here because we do want something done there, but at the moment we haven't exactly identified exactly what and they overlap um, with another a group who are working on um, improving cycling across the town. Uh, have I got that about right, uh, uh, Julian? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think um, I think they, they need to stay on the list. I have to say I, at the moment I haven't been actively pursuing them because it um, it feels like there's there's a fair bit of um, work to be done in relation to making them safe and tackling some of the you know they they would need to be they would be need to be designed really as to to uh, to, to opening them up um, in a, in a safe way and I, I suppose to be to be honest things like the twenty mile an hour scheme have taken. Uh, a bigger prior priority, so I think we should um, we should keep them on the list, um, uh, and you know at a suitable time, kind of move move forward with them. I think that as you as you know, chair, there's a bit of a debate going on about uh, in terms of developing cycling, the degree to which we should emphasise making it safe to cycle on the road, and the degree to which we should encourage shared use. Um, with pedestrians and I think at the moment our, our priority in the short term is to make the 20 mile an hour scheme a permanent and a, a success so we're, we're kind of focused on cycling on the roads and improving that so I, I, I think they should just sit where they are for the moment and then we can come back to them in the future. Yeah that makes sense keeping them in, in reserve on the list. OK, um, then we got line six about the broken curb. I haven't had a check on it, but I know um, Alan at the last minute said that it is has got a uh, reference number, so we could check on that. So um, I'm not going to go into that one in any more detail at the moment. Um, Alan, that line seven about drop curbs along the A2, did were we needing to do some work on that or is it in progress? Uh, no, it's all in progress. Um, there are marks as you walk down Canterbury Road at the moment on that north side. There are marks on the uh, the curb lines that show which ones are being dropped. 
Um, I think we've we've sort of already touched on the on the issue really a minute ago. We've got one fairly small team of people, and they're dealing with everything from the 20 mile an hour zone to cycle cycle lanes and things in most of the town centres. And uh, at the moment, it's just a really busy time. But it it is marked up. It is ready to go. So really, we can it's, uh, we can change the the note on it uh, to um, what what would you what words we use? It's not being considered now, but it's being um, scheduled or is that the right terminology for it? Uh, you, you could just leave it as being considered by KCC if you like. I'm, I'm hoping by the time we have the next meeting you'll see some change actually physically on site. So. Okay. Lovely, thank you. Thank you Alan. Okay then um, we had the the bollard. Um, I'm going to come back to that. It's on a list I've sent to Swell Borough Council which I'll talk about uh, and show you the list very shortly. Um, uh, the gates as well, the East Street gate, um, the Borough Council are looking at um, improving the signage on that gate to, uh, to deter uh, parking uh, in front of it. Um, obviously, the team who work on uh, that at the Borough Council are quite heavily involved um, with the COVID response. So unfortunately their workload, similar to KCC, is uh, quite heavy um, at the moment. Um, but it is ticking over um, and I, I will go back to it again as I, um, and I will give you more of an update when we move on to more about um, what the Borough Council are planning. I'm looking, please interject if anyone's got anything they need to say. Um, line number 10, on my understanding, I don't know if um, the town clerk can help on this, is that that idea of a bollard uh, has been dropped. Uh, does anyone know any more on that? Mainly because of lack of space. I wasn't certain that it had been specifically um, dropped, but um, I can get that removed if you want. Well, can you um, just clarify with Adam that I'm sure it could have been him who was, I was talking to and he said that um, for a reason of enough space to put the bollard in, it wasn't possible. I, uh, the, the clearance on either side of the bollard wouldn't be enough. Um, but if he can either uh, give us an update or, or remove it, or one, one or the other really. OK, I'll ask him to do that. Brilliant, thank you. Chairman, um, would, it, would it be possible that Adam could go because we were looking at sort of two or three other bollard sites that we were when we, we last met in the town centre, um, but they've all got a bit quiet. It'd be just handy to know uh, how he was getting on with. He was going to consult with uh, emergency services and uh, he was going to have a look at two or three others, but they've all got a bit quiet. It'd be quite handy if you could just confirm what's going on with all of them, really. OK, I'll get him to do that. Thanks. Uh, Line 10, the Bob Armour Close, I believe, if I'm right, it's going to JTB in December. Uh, have you got, are you aware of that, uh, Councillor Saunders? Oh, I think my internet connection must be dodgy. You're, you're on mute, Julian. Oh, sorry, sorry, apologies. Yeah, I, um, it's, it's presumably within one of the um, uh, the reports. Would it be from Mike Mike Knowles? I mean, we didn't when we had the briefing on the the agenda. We didn't specifically discuss it, but I think it might be something that's that's within um, one of the reports. I, I just 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 I I was I saw an email. Um, I was just copied in as a, as just because it's obviously in, in Abbey Ward. Um, Councillor Perkin, um, there was an update. But I think they, they were looking at potentially, um, it might be not December's JTB, but possibly the, the, the next one. I think they were saying about some, it, um, but it won't be necessarily a quick process, but it but it's, it's definitely moving forward. Um, I can't find the email, unfortunately, um, but but it's definitely it's definitely on one of them. Um, I've got a feeling it was it was too soon to put it on December's, um, but but I may be wrong in that. Um, okay, thank you, thank you, Chris. 
Chairman, I'm just looking through the um, the draft agenda that we had for the uh, chairman's briefing, and I can't see it on there, um, so I'm pretty sure it's not not going to this one. Okay, thank 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 you. Um, it's probably been put off to the next one by the sounds of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, the line seven or line twelve, the Finch Close or Hilton Close. Um, I'm I think. I'm almost certain it's going to this JTB, um, and if not, it'll be the one after. But that is being dealt with, and I know Mike Knowles at Swale has just narrowed it down, and um, they'll be putting forward for consultation um, just the entrance of Hilton Close because an informal consultation uh, raised objections to the other two locations. OK, um, the benches, maybe we can get an update from Adam on that one as well. Um, and the, ah, here we go, uh, drop curbs line 14. OK, what I'm going to do now is share a uh, another screen. It's a Google map of where uh, Councillor Perkin and I identified drop curbs for the town centre. So with regard to the town centre, uh, the borough council um, are having have employed um, a new officer on a contract to deal with town centre improvements across the borough. Uh, and that's our town centre, Sittingbourne and Sheerness. So I've sent through things that we need, we would like to be done. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to grab these other screens now. Um, kicking off with the drop curbs. This is a, a Google map that I've sent over to the borough uh, council, uh, just focusing on really what I think we can push for by, by way of drop curbs um, from the borough council. But um, I'm awaiting comment and feedback by the new officer who is dealing with this. Um, and I guess he, he's going to be the one looking at the budget to see what can be afforded. Where the green circles are with a man in is where. I I, uh, Eddie, I don't, I'm not seeing the oh, map. I'm still right. seeing the. Um, well, uh, let me see if I can sort that out. Um, what have I done wrong? Let's try again. I'll stop that one. It's all this sharing. <laughs> um, how are we doing? Has, has it changed? Yeah, yes, I can see that. Yeah. I'm learning. I'm getting a hang of the screen sharing. So uh, the green circles with the man in, they're the locations that we were looking at for crossings. I can zoom in a little bit for you there. Um, so every green man is a pair of dropped curbs. Um, some of them, um, you'll notice the ones in Newton Road, they coincide with the drawings um, from the 2020 scheme, those designs. Um, so basically Councillor Perkin was highlighting areas where she felt there weren't insufficient drop curbs for people with mobility scooters to be able to cross, um, particularly Preston Street and within the town centre. So that's the main area that we focused on. There are a few outside the town centre, but we felt they all linked in with that. They've gone through the new officer at Swale dealing with that. And I'm hoping to hear back from him soon as to whether they're able to process it. Uh, in fact, there's a meeting going on right now at the Borough Council, um, and I'm hoping they're going to be talking about um, well, I know they're talking about town centre improvements and I'll find out later exactly what they what they covered. Also on this map, you'll see the the red circles with a, a, a lorry in them. They're the areas where I've asked for uh, loading bays uh, to be marked out. Because um, although lorries can unload on double yellow lines, I, I feel it'd be more useful if we can get loading bays marked out uh, to give the drivers more confidence so they can stop there for a while. The one behind 12 Marketplace, I have marked it on there. 
even though it is already marked out on the ground behind uh, 12 Marketplace. The other thing I've put on there is you can see it at the top of the screen. It's the junction of Court Street and Crescent Road. I've put down that's where we would like um, additional disabled bays to be put if at all possible. Again, this is just our wish list of improvements to Faversham Town Centre. Has anyone got anything they want to add at the moment about um, the dropped curbs, uh, the loading bays or the disabled parking? OK, so I am going to then show share a another screen. Where am I? Right, this document, hopefully you are familiar with it. I think it was shared by the town clerk. And that sort of summarises the things we put forward before, but I've sent them again to the, the new officer working um, uh, on the town centre improvements. Um, they've been um, hired to uh, work on these improvements. Um, so that is very uh, good news, uh, but I have no time scale whatsoever as to when these things will um, will occur. The other thing to say is um, I can add, we, we can add more requests if we need to. Um, and hopefully the list is comprehensive, but if we do think of anything else, um, as the Public Spaces Committee, we can feed more into it if needed. Eddie, could I, could I raise something under the- uh, Yes, please. Uh, improvement list. The yeah. um, west to east, Cross town walking route. Um, I I know on some occasions um, there's been discussion about extending this, and I think particularly um, it would be a, quite a strong argument to extend it from Napleton Road down to Stonebridge Pond, and it would actually then tie in with the previous discussion about. Uh, making it easier to cross the road um, from West Street to, to Stonebridge Pond. And there's there's also a logic in terms of, of bringing it into um, Priory um, sure. as well. So um, I, I'm not sure what our process is, but I'd be keen to promote the idea of uh, the, uh, the cross town walking route being extended as far as uh, Stonebridge Pond. I'll, I'll email the officer con, uh, concerned, Julian, and uh, uh, copy you in on that. So, you, so you're aware of the, uh, the chap who's uh, doing it um, as part of the economic improvement team. Um, thank you. Chairman. Uh, yes. Um, uh, uh, I. I met with um, the two officers from Svalbard Council that are looking at this work um, probably about four weeks ago or so, just before the, the lockdown started, the second lockdown. Mm -hmm. we, we met in Sheerness Town Centre and we looked at uh, a number of things that they were looking at in Sheerness. We just basically walked through and had a look at a few things there. And they did say, look, we, they seem to get a lot out of the meeting and they said well, I'd quite like to just sort of go through perhaps Sittimorne and uh, Faversham and do the same sort of thing it'd be quite handy and we were looking to set it up and then obviously lockdown happened we haven't done it um, but we will be doing it at some stage in the future and obviously I in in the list of things the short list of things that I was talking about to do with Faversham I did mention obviously the one that you've got down to number nine in there the heritage paving um, and the pedestrian surface so I was talking about um, pointing of granite sets. I was talking about West Street and blocks and that that you know subject that we've been talking about for so long at this meeting and we've never had the cash to do and it sounds as though somebody I don't know possibly could have the cash to do in the future. Um, in amongst all that lot I did also mention um, it would be worth a, perhaps a, a bit more thought about graffiti yeah. uh, and I don't see it on there but I said that there have been issues to do with graffiti over the last couple of years or so. Um, and I don't know whether there's any thought to uh, any areas where it might benefit from um, 
the anti-graffiti paint being applied. Um, and I, and I, all I, I just mention it now because it's, I don't see it sort of something that's similar to that on the list there. Sure. And I don't know whether I don't know whether that has already been carried out by the district council, and now it's just a matter of spraying, you know, spraying water on it to remove it, or whether or not there is some scope for for doing something like that. So I'll throw that in as one that I don't see on the list there, but I did mention to them at the time. And um, but I think I think the meeting we mentioned about walking around the town will probably still happen in the future. But I'm, I, it's just a question, really. Is that something you want to consider as part of that? Could could well be. Thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, Louise, can can you ask Adam to identify areas which would benefit from the anti graffiti um, paint to make it easier um, to wash off? And I can forward those on. Yes, I'll get him to do that. OK. Right. Sorry, we're flicking through my screens again, folks. I'm getting there. Where are we? Um, OK, hopefully you can see that we've gone back to the uh, Highways Improvement Plan. Let me know if you can't see it. Yes, we can see it. OK, so um, line 14 uh, has gone into um, the Swell Borough Council uh, list. Um, line 15, where, uh, whereabouts would you say we are with that, Councillor Williams? Um, thank you. I, I was going. I, I've sort of since since the last conversation on this. Um, I've had um, conversations with Kent Wildlife Trust because um, uh, they're they're doing um, various schemes at the moment where they're trying to provide educational uh, things for people for members of the public, particularly under them their campaigns. Um, and I've got a meeting scheduled in January with with some of them about this um, actions for insects campaign. Within that, there's scope to help with providing information or, or the best way to to um, demonstrate kind of what's happening in certain areas with signage. And I'm I'm wondering whether that's that's a good way of of doing it to, to try and work with with an organisation like that who've got the the knowledge to provide that information so we can partner up you know clearly the the the, the potential to still for the town council to, to, to fund or, or or whatever is still we still need to look at that but um in terms of um i think i'm struggling with just making sure we do it well um i mean i haven't i know on here it says um to me oh, where well, i've lost it um work with alison peters um on it, I haven't. I haven't had a conversation with Alison um, about that um, as yet. Um, but I'm, my, my assumption is that's more towards the sort of design and making sure that it kind of fits in with the, the kind of overall sort of things we're doing. But I, I, I don't know how you how you feel, uh, Councillor Thomas, about that. Whether whether I can um, include this within my conversations with the Wildlife Trust to try and get some sort of um, coordinated thing with some of the work we're doing across the town. And they can help with some of the information, or whether whether they prefer me just to kind of um, go it alone, if that makes sense. Um, no, I mean, but first of all, uh, you should pursue working with um, the Wildlife Trust and possibly Ali from uh, from Swell in Bloom. Um, yeah, and they're the sort of people who could pull for, pull together um, the information needed. Um, the other thing that could begin to happen is trying to <laughs> set up on the Farisham Town Council website these pages that would cover, i.e. because once the pages are set up uh, with the data going onto the page, then you can set up a QR code. Yeah. Um, and even in the short term, we may be able to put up um, temporary signs uh, similar to the ones that we've put up um, already, um, i.e. Um, just 
made up basically uh, the way we've been making up other signs with the QR code on. Um, and I would suggest words to the effect, you know, please scan this code for more information about uh, what's here or something. Um, uh, uh, so we've got a starting point. So I think collecting the data is probably the bigger task. Yeah. Yeah. The, the there is the what what could link in quite nicely is the with the town receiving the um, uh, um, neighbourhood with the best buzz award by B Bumblebee Conservation Trust uh, just recently. There's about I think about fifty plaques to go around. Well, yeah, fifty plaques to go around different locations of the town. So, you know, some some will be um, in in public places like you know the wreck and. Um, able to take places like that um, and they they're obviously been they've been assessed based on what what those areas have con contributed to to that the town receiving that award and it'd be really good once once we know the locations of those I know that they're waiting until they can get out to do it after lockdown um, it'd be good to tie those locations in with with this and the QR code can help explain those locations and how they've um you know the biodiversity element so it, it links it all together and i think the, the conversations that i'm hoping to have in january will be with those from bumblebee conservation and ali as well so it's a trying to get them all together to work on a coordinated thing so hopefully that will make it a bit easier for us um that that, that information is kind of already almost already there and we just need to add in bits that we want to from the town council's perspective that makes sense thank you thank you in, in my opinion, in the short term, we we should you, know, you should continue with this um, mm. w without the involvement of Alice and Peters yet, um, because I, my understanding is that we're not going to be putting up anything major by way of signs. Nothing. We're not going to be putting a lot of money into it at the moment. And if we do decide to put some money into the signage, then that will be the time to consult Alice and Peters for what she thinks by way of design. I think probably. Um, we need to put forward an idea and then she can come back with her idea of how that sign should look. Um, yeah. She needs probably needs a bit more to work on. Yeah, um, I agree. Are you okay to carry on with that at the moment or is there anything else you need from the committee? Um, no, I'm quite happy to carry on with that. I, I, I feel a little bit more like I've got I've got the process now. I think before I was kind of a, a struggling with where to start, but I think I can I can sort of now, now we've got kind of a bit more idea of some locations. I can continue with that and Hopefully, I can report back at the next meeting with an update from this meeting and a bit more information. Okay. Okay then. Um, moving on to line sixteen then uh, about um, improving signage with destinations and timings. Uh, Councillor Saunders, how, how do you want to proceed with this? Um, thank you. I, I mean, I think. Um, uh, previous meetings we agreed that we needed to consult with the Faversham Society, possibly the Faversham Footpaths Group about a, a design and I, I assume from what you've just been saying that the plan would also to be would be to involve Alison Peters um, in in this. Um, so I, is the is it your understanding that there is money available now through Either this committee or through the Swale Town Centre um, money to to move forward with with this. Yes, um, I'll send you uh, the details of the officers at Swale who are working on it, um, and you probably saw on one of the lists I've suggested that we have um, some version of um, the totem poles which have uh, directions and times on it. So this information here um, would, would in, in, in my opinion, go on to these totem poles, um, uh, detailing how far it is to get to certain destinations from that point. Um, so it'd be worth asking them how, um, how they've gone about the sitting warm one. Do they, what do they need from uh, locals to help them compile the data that's going to go on? To the totem yeah. poles. Okay, my um, my concern about this is that we don't end up with um, a 
you know, a design which doesn't fit into the the feel of the town centre, which is obviously, you know, there's a strong uh, heritage uh, element to it. Um, so that's why I'd be particularly concerned that we did, you know, engage people like the Faversham Society in in discussions about the, the uh, design rather than, you know, putting something in which then every, everyone would, wasn't very happy with. I think that would be that would be a great uh, shame. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if if the proce best process is uh, to liaise with the, the officer involved in in this, that would be that would be good. I'll, I'll uh, put you in contact and I think you're quite right, whatever. Uh, form of totem is used uh, or information sign is used it needs to um, fit in with the other heritage signage that we've got up um, around the town thank you okay um the forms road underpass i have asked uh, the borough council if they will fin uh, fund the improvements there um Pedestrian safety concerns, um, in my opinion, that's on hold at the moment. What with the current situation with the road closures. Um, Abbey Street, that one is um, been to the JTB and I believe they're working on it. Is that right, Councillor Saunders? Uh, it's going back to uh, the JTB this at the next meeting on, on the 7th. Thank you. Um, with, with, a, a pro with a proposal, I think, which has been discussed with the Neighbourhood Association. So, I, well, we won't prejudge whether it will go through or not, but uh, yeah. I think everyone seems to be fairly happy with it. Thank you. Um, line 20, uh, Councillor Williams, did you want to give an update on that? Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Um, so, some works have been done um, on Whitstable Road. Um, uh, on the um, opposite side of the wreck, so with with the side of the house is on, um, they've put in some beanie drains um, to hopefully alleviate any further flooding uh, on Whitstable Road. Um, so that that is um, those drains are they've they've cleared some of the existing drainage that they they didn't realise was was blocked. Um, so some so the overflow basically will go into Cook Stitch rather than into the sewer system. Um, so there hasn't been a, a great deal of in, a stormy, in, intense rain since they've been installed. I, I think that it, it seems to be working at the moment. But I think what 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 um, what KCC are um, I do I want to do is basically assess the situation over a sort of a, a, over the winter, I think, um, and actually, if 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 the problem isn't alleviated, potentially look at putting further drainage on the other side of the road um, to to improve it. So it's not it's it's certainly a good deal of improvement, um, but there is, there is potential to do more if if needs be. So um, I'll obviously keep working with residents, flagging up anything that they have, have concerns, and I know that I know that Swale. Um, have um, continued with the good sort of street cleansing there to keep the leaves and debris out of the drains, which has been, been really good. So it's it's um, overall, I think it's been, you know, it's working quite well. Thank you. Just scroll down a bit there. Uh, line 21, town centre, uh, planters. Uh, you may have seen Louise um, shared some uh, photographs where I'd mark my suggestions or where we might uh, consider planters. We would all obviously need to consult with KTC, Alan, about those locations. Um, were you able to uh, look at those photographs? Did, did they make sense in the sense of what I was trying to convey with the photographs? Um, I've, I've had a quick look, uh, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, I haven't spent a lot of time on it. I do need to carry on with that. No, no, no problem. Um, right, look, what I want to do is see if I can. We have had one um, bit of information in. Um, here we go. Right, I'm going to try and share my screen again. OK. 
you should have a photo uh, coming up on screen. I can see that. So the question is going to be, do we want uh, a wooden style planter like uh, like this? Um, and apparently in a wooden style planter, we can have a reservoir that would help um, uh, with the watering uh, side of it. Um, we are still getting more information in on the planter, so we have no pricing at the moment. Um, and we're still waiting on uh, quotes from a couple of other uh, companies who supply these. Let me see. Did, did the screen change? Did you see a different photograph then? Yes. Yes. So that's another uh, angle of that. I think it's the same planter. Uh, and then we've got the plastic plants. Uh, they're the, like the ones we've already got that the Borough Council um, brought for us at um, Port Street and, and East Street. Has anyone any comments on which one they think would be more appropriate for us? Uh, can, can I can I um, comment, please? Yes. Thank, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean that the the planters that have gone the 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 black round planters that have gone in just recently. I, I think the planting scheme um, is 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 good. And I think it's it's it's, it's sort of um, much more interesting and, and kind of obviously has a bit more diversity than than sort of maybe previous planting schemes. So I think that's that's good. Um, I think. Uh, Personally, I, I would wouldn't always sort of seems a little bit more attractive. Um, I suppose there is the potential of wooden becoming depending on the type of wood and what's preserved on it. That sometimes they they kind of deteriorate a bit quicker than say a plastic or composite sort of material. Um, and and I guess wooden ones could be more sustainable because they're, again they're not got plastic in them. So. Um, I, th I think it'll be it'll be interesting to if there is any more sort of um, ideas coming in um, to sort of look at those. Um, but um, I think I think e either either a wooden or a wood effect recycled plastic one might might be the the sort of way to go. Um, and also there it seem seemingly with this one, it's, it, there's, there's obviously gaps underneath to be able to move it with potentially a pump truck or a forklift um, because I, I guess. Um, there may be times where if there's a big festival or something in the town, they might need to be shifted along. Um, I suppose there's a potential then being moved. So, um, and the the other thing I, I I was sort of thinking about earlier was obviously we we've um, in the past we've been able we've we've funded um, having hanging baskets in the town centre. Um, and I mind I think I'm right in thinking that 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 it, it might reserve money as finished. Um, uh, for for those, so um, and and uh, personally having a, having a th having a thought about ab about hanging baskets, um, I, I I wonder whether they offer good value for money um, in the town centre because they they cost quite a bit, and obviously we've we've changed the planting scheme um, over the last couple of years to make them more sustainable, um, but my my feeling is planters offer an opportunity to do something a bit more um better value for money because there's something that's more permanent the planting schemes are easier to change and i think there's the opportunity to create a lot more greenery uh in the in the town center um so that's just my uh, that's kind of probably jumping on something else but in terms of the, the finances of it i think um you know I, I personally think planters are perhaps a bit more of the way to go in the town center no uh, thank you Okay. Oh, yeah, Councillor Saunders, go ahead. Um, well, I I won't uh, give you an, the exposition that, counts, that Chris has given. I mean, there's a lot of good content in there. Um, I, I was just going to say, aesthetically, um, I think probably the wooden ones look look nicer. So, I guess what we've got to be thinking of um, before our next meeting is to be clear in our mind of where we feel we want planters. You'll notice from um, the locations I've suggested, they're all um, out of the town centre. Um, and that's because um, I was envisaging 
something like this, a bit more substantial um, in the town centre. I think we're going to have to look at something more um, able to fit in with whatever market arrangement or uh, event we've got going on. And if we do decide to have something substantial in the town, we've got to bear in mind we might need to or we will need to move it. Um, I think we've got Adam on the call now. Um, are you looking at other size planters as well uh, for us, Adam? Hopefully you can hear me. Yes, can do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've contacted a couple of firms, but basically they've asked for more information as in what it is we want and how many, because then they can give us a proper quote. So right. I think what you're saying is right. We need to find the locations and what type of um, area we're going to be putting them in. And then we can work out work backwards of regarding size. Obviously, the wooden planters, I think, are coming all sizes yeah. and they, they recommended uh, reservoirs. So right. to, which reduce the uh, maintenance. OK, it's going to be a little bit of a chicken and egg thing, I'm guessing here, because the amount we want is going to depend on, on the cost to a degree. Um, looking at those photographs I've sent through. Is it worth us in the short term asking um, Adam to get quotes for, I don't know, um, half a dozen of the wooden planters? This is ballpark because at the moment I've got no idea what these are going to be costing us. Um, and from what Adam's just said, we need somewhere to start so we can start getting a feel of it. Uh, has anyone got any thoughts on that? Can, can okay, I? Go ahead, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think I, I got, I got the, my, my last comments. I got a bit. I kind of, I, I kind of mashed over two kind of separate things. Really. Uh, I mean, you go, go, the, the, the photos that you've sent around of those locations. I think, particularly um, the Forbes Road. Um, parts you know by the railings by Abel's Acre there they, they usually have some sort of planters on the um the railings I think that location is a really good place potentially to have um if you know if we can only afford to do um a few at a time that that's quite a good initial perhaps location um and um I, th I think it makes sense yeah to get to get a rough idea of the costing of of, of, of a number um to to see really the, the costings because I think yeah it does vary depending on on the materials where they come from what goes in it and I, I so I think um yeah it makes a lot of sense to do that but my my my, my feeling is that that, that Forbes Road area will be a really good potential pilot area to, to try it and then if we then be able to expand say next year then we can do um some of the others okay I mean from what I've heard in the discussion so far, we prefer wooden because it looks obviously better. It will fit in much better with the town. The question I'm going to ask Adam to put when he's speaking to the suppliers is how anti graffiti are they? Um, that would be my concern is cleaning off graffiti that occurs on them. Will it be easy or difficult? So that's something to find out. Um, I'm trying to wonder. Shall we kick off and ask Adam to find the price for six at the moment? Um, and then we'll at least give us a bit of a, a starting point. The other thing I want to find out is what are the, uh, should we um, have them already planted up? Um, by the cost of them coming planted up or the cost of them uh, coming for us to plant up? And what the arrangement is um, do we buy them outright or um, is there an option of having maintenance on it or, or how does it work i i don't i don't know um part of me thought is there a rental scheme but um i know the borough councils um they have acquired them and i understand that the supplier then maintains them um so it's really understanding what the services that um, the, these firms offer. Uh, the other thing I'd be interested in is. Personally, I can't see this size of planter working in the time town centre. I don't know about uh, the rest of the committee. I would think we need some examples of something wooden uh, and smaller that might work in the town centre. Um, 
is that just the general agreement with those um, those feelings? Chairman. Oh yes, uh, Alan. Yeah. Um, I, I probably um, I need to do some work on this really. I think to help you, uh, just as I would normally go around the site. So I would maybe with Adam or, or, or whoever, but I would normally go around the sites. I'm not going to have time to do that for in the near future. If I did just as a desktop exercise, if I just went around the photos of the sites that you've got and just had a quick look on Street View and gave you a quick, yes, that's a easily possible with that size of planter that you're looking at on the photo there, or yes, yes that's possible, but you'd need, need a much smaller one or something like that. If I gave you a quick nod on each of those as to what I think without actually visiting the site, but it would just give you an idea of the numbers that you want and it might help you. I mean, my first thought when I saw the photos was what, what size of what, what size of object is going to be placed there? Yeah. Uh, and so it's a bit of a chicken and egg for me as well, because I need to know a rough idea of the size, but I'll take it as though it's the size. Those two that you showed us there in different materials, but they're roughly the same size. I'll assume that's going to be the size and I'll take a quick look through all the photos and see what I think will fit and what won't fit. I mean, my particular sort of concern in the town centre is if you've got a location where people naturally funnel through and if you've got a big event how are they going to funnel through are they going to be stopped from funneling through that sort of thing is the sort of things that I'm looking at um, uh, my my other query would be are the are the two of them both available with the reservoir the the timber and the the plastic can you get them both with the reservoir because I think that'd be a really handy feature to have on there and it might sort of sway you and is the timber one available in another color is it is it available in a darker color um, they're the two thoughts that I've got um, but I'll, I'll gladly over the next day or so I'll gladly quickly whip through all those photos bearing in mind the size of the photo that you just said we'll assume the wooden one or the plastic ones the same size I'll give you a quick thoughts on that and I'll feed that back to Adam and then he'll have a rough idea of whether he's looking to order six or 16. No, yeah, that, that might make a difference to the prices. Brilliant. Okay thank, thank you uh, Alan okay. um, no and with regard to the size of the planters the the round ones are a meter in diameter and the um, square ones, are, uh, each side is a metre long. Yeah. And by the looks of the photographs, we've got a choice of height of planter. One of them is nearly a metre high, I think, and the other one is um, uh, is less. So um, that, they'll give you a rough idea. Yeah, that's fine. Of the size. But thank you with that. OK. OK, um, we will come back to this um, point about the planters um, in the new year. Uh, but. In the meantime, if, we, if, you, if you see anything you like the uh, planter that might be suitable, please take a photograph of it and then we can share it for the, for the next meeting or if you find anything. But I know Adam has got another two suppliers that are putting in quotes. Can you share them with us as soon as you've got them, um, Adam? Um, and then at least the committee members can be um, um, kept up to date uh, and able to consider the options yep. prior yep, to the I'll happily share it and what I'll do is even the information we've just received regarding the reservoirs and the materials, then I'll just literally go back and try and get quotes AS of some ideas. I'm not 100% about the planting them or not planting them. Is that something we want to get involved in? I know I can't do it, but it's a lot of responsibility for Chris or do we just let Chris? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Councillor Williams. Um, it will be interesting to know the costs um, to, just to sort of give us an idea how you know what we can make a decision on. I mean, one possibility is, um, you know, that the, the actual planting elements, the, the plants that are chosen and used, um, obviously, you know, we've got a climate and biodiversity budget. Um, you know, it's possible that, that that element of it could come out, could come within that that um, remit. Um, we are also with with one of the um, one of the projects in, under climate and bio we're doing this to trying to get people involved with community gardening and there is a list forming of people that want to do projects in the town um, and we haven't identified exact locations yet because sort of obviously some of them tend to be um, uh, pieces of land which obviously you need to get like permission from KCC or whoever so it could be possible if if the decision is that we we want as a town council want to be more in control of the planting um, that 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 we 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 fit that element in within climate and biodiversity and, and get some of the volunteers possibly Faversham in bloom as well and, and we actually um, if it's cheaper and we've got the, the budget to do it that way but it'd be it'd be good to know 
whoever the company is that we're getting the quotes from, if they offer the, 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 the service of planting or possibly watering and things like that, it'd be good to know the costs just because if it's more economical, then obviously that might be worth discussing. But um, um, it, but that's just, but that's something we can we can hopefully um, have more information to discuss next meeting. OK, lovely. Uh, thank you, Chris. Right. OK, look back to the uh, the highways improvement plan. Um, we just discussed line 21, the planters. Uh, line 22 um, overlaps with that. So um, unless anyone wants to add something on line 22, um, um, I'm going to move over that one because that's something that we're working on ongoing and it's probably more to do with around the town, which uh, the Biodiversity Committee is working on. Line 23, uh, the water and drinking fountain, um, that is something we could consider. However, the style of the water and drinking fountain, as you've seen for the photographs, may not be appropriate for the marketplace. Um, we have got a drinking fountain on the back of the public toilets in Central Car Park now. Um, I wasn't planning on covering this one any further at the moment. It's not off the agenda, but it's something that um, we haven't got anything definitive on at the moment. Has anyone got anything they want to say about those last couple of points? Otherwise, I was going to uh, uh, move on. OK. Um, CCTV, um, uh, what's the situation there, uh, Julian, Councillor Saunders? Um, yeah, I wasn't too clear what the the action was here. I, I, I haven't, I, it looked as though we were discussing getting a, a kind of fuller understanding of where, where all the cameras were mm -hmm. and, and what they covered. Um, I mean, I can certainly go back to the um, a community safety unit at Swale and ask if there is some kind of diagram that they have available if that's um, what we what we need against this uh, this item uh, and I suppose from there then I mean I think a, a dialogue you know with them about the location of cameras is 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 good um, and then you know then they're in a position to judge whether according to incidents, um, it's appropriate to move cameras. So in the short term, I'm, I'm happy to go back to them and see if we can get a more um, you know, a diagram of some kind showing where the, the cameras are. Yes, I think that would be useful. Can I just check with committee members if I've got my understanding of this line correctly? Um, is this about understanding um, so that we can answer queries or what areas it covers so therefore we could try and get cctv coverage for that particular area um, is that what, what this is about um, i'm trying to remember what the uh, instigation of this item on the uh, on the hit was I, I, yeah I, I, sorry adam wants to say something no, I was going to say it was. I think it's probably originated from all the complaints we was getting about incidents within the town, and then we was getting responses back from Swale saying that the camera wasn't covering that area, the camera wasn't available that day, and it was just trying to. So we knew within the council when we get complaints or issues, if we can actually address the situation with the cameras because obviously we've got no access to them we're never going to get access to them i understand so it was just mainly an understanding of what was available so if we do get an issue is it worth reporting it further up the train because obviously we know that area has been covered with the camera that was all it was lovely uh, thank you adam that, that i'm sure that'll be useful uh, when julian's trying to uh, discuss that with the, uh, the the team at the borough council um I, line 25 is self-explanatory. Um, that wooden bollard, line 26, I think we decided against that, didn't we, Adam, in the end? There was, um, the issue is, is there's vehicles driving up West Street 
from South Road uh, around the flowers, the new gardens that we planted up. Um, the idea was to put a bollard there, but there was some history that said that it was an emergency access for ambulances, egress and access to town during events. But I've contacted the history markers, which is the ambulance service, and they are no, not aware of it and said that any uh, ex events within the town centre, that would be part of their risk assessment. So actually we could have a bollard there or we could put a planter there. Um, and then that way the planter could be moved if it was seen that that would be used as an escape route or access route for an ambulance during events. But obviously the, the, the rumour was that there was a somewhere written down that you can't put that is an access route, but no one has been able to confirm that with me. OK. How did the committee feel about having a removable bollard put there, one that can be locked into place and that way if it does need to be removed? Or should we go, should we pursue the route of a fixed bollard? Has anyone got any comments on that? Um, I think I think if um, if there's still a slight question over potential access there for, for things, then maybe a um, a dropped bollard or you know removable one might might be might be a good idea. But it might be interesting to get the costs of of, of both just to sort of because if one's a, a lot more, then it might influence what we do. I guess um, I think I, I remember I remember back about a year probably. I think it was before I was got even become a councillor. Actually, I, I remember talking to people about. I think it was um, the, the people that were doing the, the, the beds down on South Road there about having the odd car driving over there or, or going up West Street. I don't think that's been as much of a problem as it used to be because I think the bike racks there have kind of helped with that a bit as well because it's kind of narrowed it. But I think yeah, just a, a single bollard probably would um, would make a difference. So I think if there's no real issue with emergency, then. I think a fixed bollard would be fine. Um, Chairman, okay. yeah, just come and say, um, just it's interesting just hearing the discussion there. But uh, I think, from my point of view, if there is any sort of concern at all, then then probably a lockable one is the way to go. There's not that much difference between the cost of lockable and the fixed bollard. Um, obviously, the cost of the installation is a big part of it anyway, because the cost of um, the uh, the bollard itself is not too different. Uh, so I would probably err on the side of a, of a lockable one and at least there's something fairly easy to crop and get out of the way if it, if it needs to be. Yeah. Um, uh, if I could just go back one item, one item was sort Sorry. of glossed over a little bit was the one about the, the railings. We, we do, I don't think we have many occasions where we haven't done something in black. Uh, and on the ones that we've had, we've had a particular, uh, the, sorry, the railings, the painting of them. I don't think we've had too many. The ones that we've had, we have put a few in recently, probably three in the last couple of years or so, where we painted them white instead of. Um, but they've been particular sort of need for that. Um, the the Abel's Acre one was one where the, the, the group that look after the area, we did ask them beforehand and they specifically said they'd prefer it in white. Um, I think because they were worried about people cycling down the alleyway and just cycling into it. Yeah. So uh, so that was one. The uh, outside the United Church in Preston Street was one that we also did in white. Uh, we refreshed it in white. And again, it was because it's so close to a parking bay. They're all parking bays through there. And the, the, the railing is literally on the back of the curb line. So it's much closer to the edge of the road than we would normally do. And for that reason, we took the view that we would do that one specifically. We would repaint it in the white that it always has been. So um, I don't, I, unless other, and the other one was recreation ground, um, which was done again for mobility reasons to, and to make it a little bit more visible um, because where the railing is was just outside the area of the street lights. So I, I don't think generally we do tend to, I think we're aware that you want things in black where at all possible. And uh, I don't, unless, unless other people have seen things go in recently, we think that would have been much better in black. Um, but to go back to the the wooden bollard, uh, the wooden bollard, um, I think I'd probably go with a lockable one. I think it's, if we're going to put one in, I think probably a lockable is the way to do it, rather than some sort of plant. Or at least the fire brigade can literally crop that off in two seconds if they need to. Can we get um, lockable wooden bollards as well as lockable yeah. metal ones? Yeah. We can. Yeah. yeah. I know when we walked around with yourself, um, um, we were considering wood and might fit in better. Yeah. Um, with the bench. Because of the posts that are nearby. Yeah. 
Yes, that's right. Are you okay to pursue that, Adam, and get some costs for a, a lockable wooden bollard? Yeah, I think um, if we're happy to go, that it's just we're only going to need one bollard. Yes. Yeah. The issue has been um, MB's foods as deliveries, and the van driver drives up, and he's been doing that most mornings uh, during the lockdown. Whether it's still happening, I can't confirm. But I'll look at a wooden removable bollard. Yes, please. Lock yeah. Lockable. Yeah. Thank you. The other thing, can I ask the committee, do we need line 25 on the hip anymore? Because it's not a task, it's just, and I'm sure we would anyway, uh, follow up on any furniture that's not black to understand why it's not black. And do the other committee members have any uh, comments on that? I, th I, th I think, um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It's not, not a task and I think this is task list so I don't think it particularly needs to be there we could always you know somewhere else have a a, a list of kind of style a style guide um, but uh, it's not a specific task I don't think that okay. needs to be addressed yeah reported on each uh, at each meeting okay so uh, if there are, if there's no objections I'm going to ask for line 25 to be removed from uh, the highways improvement plan thank you okay Line 27 has been done, so that's great news. Uh, thank you, Adam. Nice bit of work there. Um, and then that is, where are we now? Da, da, da. Most of the rest of it's it's done. It's work that's been done. The yeah, the uh, the uh, lion field uh, or the Osprey's Road fence, new metal fence has gone in. Um, and I think that is very good improvement and it's a big safety improvement for any children on scooters or, or bikes or what have you there. And it also prohibits uh, larger vehicles um, cutting through to lion fields. Um, OK, the last item on the highways improvement plan is the dropped curbs that um, Maria and Chris uh, looked at and drew up a uh, a list of down here. Um, with some one or one or two of these were on the uh, report that went to the borough council. The ones that have been listed up here, Alan, uh, were you able to identify that they are on the KCC to do list that we talked about earlier, or? Do we need to go through? Do I need to go through this another time with you? Hello, Alan. Sorry, had mute on. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, probably probably worth a separate ten minutes or so to go through them all. I think uh, just go through okay. them separately outside the meeting. Okay, I'll arrange at some point uh, um, as long as it's allowable to catch up with you. Uh, we'll we'll go through that. OK, so I am going to stop sharing. There we go. That's better. And going back to. So we're, we've, we've been going through item four, the highways improvement plan. We've looked at the uh, Swell Borough Council list, i.e. the things that have been reported to them. We considered the planter locations. Uh, Alan's going to report back more on whether they're appropriate ones. Um, we've talked about the signage with the QR codes, which Chris is going to be picking up with regard to biodiversity. And I'm going to put Julian in contact with the, uh, the new swell officer uh, dealing with the town centre improvements so that any designs that he, they come up with uh, fit in with their heritage style of Faversham. Ah, the green pedestrian priority signs, they should have come through in the pack and you may have seen them before. Four trial versions of these signs have been printed and Adam is putting them up um, either today or, or tomorrow um, and then we can see how it goes and we can look at them ourselves and see how um, how they fit in or whether we think they're they're working and whether or not they need changing or whether or not we need any uh, more of them. Um, I don't think they're up quite yet, are they, Adam? We only looked at it yesterday. 
They'll be going up um, as soon as the meeting's over. Excellent. I've got so, one here. Yeah, yeah, hold it up for the guys. So that's the sample that's going up. Um, we've cut off the bottom corners so they don't um, injure people. So uh, Adam's done a good job with that. Uh, at the moment, there's only four, um, and then we can decide whether we need more, um, depending on our feelings about them and uh, any any feedback that we get on them. Um, where are we now? Sorry, folks. Sorry, sorry. We talked about the water fountain at the moment and where it is. If we do want another water fountain within the town centre, it does need a water supply and drainage. OK, I'm going to move on. Oh, sorry, Adam, go ahead. Just regarding the water fountain, obviously the one that the central car park is excellent, um, but the only my concern is that we're trying to encourage cycling and obviously it's very difficult to fill a bottle up from that one, mm. from, the, from the one that Swow have installed. So if we are looking to do one, I think it's paramount that we look at ones that cyclists can fill up their water bottles. That was all just a comment, just an observation. Yes, no, I understand. Um, I, I suppose this committee could consider whether we want to finance one of the uh, versions that were sent through um, the photos that I sent through to you. Um, I think we'll, we'll we'll put that one off. Can I ask committee members just to look at the photographs and think whether or not we want to put in a version where um, cyclists or anyone can fill up a water bottle rather than just have a drinking fountain? Um, because what we've got is just a drinking fountain, which is very difficult to fill up a uh, water bottle from, and whether or not we want to pursue uh, the permission from Swale to uh, put in our own, because we do need a water supply and drainage, which we have got there. So that's something to bear in mind. I'm not saying we need to make a decision at the moment, but it is something we should consider. Um, or is there another location um, where we could have a water bottle filling? Uh, uh, station. Um, I don't know. Um, I, I have seen a lot of cyclists seem to come into Central Car Park and then into the town. So that seems to be a reasonable place to try and put one of these um, water bottle filling stations. Has anyone got any thoughts on this about a water bottle filling station rather than a uh, drinking fountain? We will keep that on there and we will have uh, Julian, Councillor Saunders, are you going to say something? Uh, well, I, th I think um, I think Adam's point about filling water bottles is is sound, really. I mean, I, I, I think for, you know, people are used to carrying water bottles around now and I would thought hygiene wise, like um, you know, people filling bottles and taking water away rather than trying to drink at the fountain is probably you know, to be encouraged and if we have pandemic, further pandemics in the future. Uh, so, yeah. So maybe we can look at the cost of one of those wall mounted ones. I th think you did get it for me, didn't you, Adam? The wall mounted water bottle filling one. Yeah, I had a quick look at prices. It's mainly design, the design. I mean, obviously we did think about uh, with the works going on in the exhibition room downstairs, it's putting one on the outside there because we actually got water tap there on the oh, inside. Right. Yeah. But it's the drainage. We're struggling for drainage. Oh, yeah. but I can look into if we want to progress that because the water is literally left hand side as you look at the exhibition centre. But so obviously we've got no drainage or air drainage is at the rear of the property. So we need right. to find one at the front of the property somehow. So, so drainage at the front of the, the, the issue we've yeah. got. Yeah, if we and could just get the drainage, then we could put a tap in tomorrow. It's quite right. easy if we had the funding, obviously, because we've got the fresh water supply. And I think that'd be a perfect location because it's right in the centre of the town. It's our building. But again, I could speak to Alan maybe and or get a quote to see if we can put drainage. Because it's only going to be the overflow of a water bottle, isn't it? Yes. So it's not going to be <laughs> continuous running water. So um, I'm not sure. I'll have to look, investigate further. 
we'll pursue that a bit about the drainage then. I think that's a good idea and that, that could be a good, good location for it. OK. So um, item five on the agenda was about the tranche two uh, funding. I have emailed um, KCC to say um, Faversham do have a number of um, improvements that could be made to the town that would improve cycling and walking and particularly referred them to our uh, 20 mile an hour designs. But I haven't got any more details of the tranche two funding yet. Um, but uh, we asked for shouting about it to uh, get our fair share of whatever money does become available. Um, we've been through item six while we were going through the hip. Please chip in if there's anything that needs to be said. Right, item seven, the budget. So you should have received the budget sh sheet through. Um, All I was going to suggest at the moment is that we request a similar budget for next year. Unless anyone has got any particular differing opinions on that. No, that, I think that seems sensible um, to me. How about yourself, Councillor Saunders? Yeah, I, I would agree. I would have thought uh, uh, putting in for the same budget as this uh, this year would make uh, sense. Um, I suppose we need to, not, not now, but we need to perhaps at the next meeting look at how we're going to spend up the, the current mm -hmm. uh, budget and what our priorities are for uh, uh, expenditure next year. Right, I'll get that added to the agenda for the January meeting of this committee. Thank you. OK, um, well, has anyone got any other business they want to, to bring up? Oh yeah, Council Williams. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a quick one. I, I'm not sure whether it's relevant here, but um, uh, my my route, my route into work um, means I have to go, or I generally go under the subway under the um, railway line on, between Station Road and the Mall. I know I know we've discussed it in this committee before about the there was a uh, propose, there was there was the, the um, plans to have that sort of refurbished because it's got quite um, I mean it gets quite bad with litter um, anyway but um, but it, it's generally in, in a sort of fairly bad state and I don't know if that's something that we we can pursue here or add on to the highway improvement plan or or I'm not sure but um, I, I know that network rail or south or southeast trains were, were but it was their their sort of plans they were going to do and I don't know if that's still going to happen or not if anyone knows. Was, was that the subway literally by the railway station that goes from Preston Street up to the Mall? Yeah. Um, yes, oh, sorry, um, go ahead Adam. Um, I had a report of um, this week that it's unsightly down there and obviously believed to be used as a toilet, so a lot of unpleasant smells. Now, I, I requested that it goes on a monthly clean for jet washing and that to make sure it's been updated. But I spoke to Richard, the trolley uh, man for the town, and he's been asked to go around and bleach it today, but no water facilities. So again, it's an issue that needs to be raised with Swell. I've started the process with Swell and Biffa and get it on a regular contract pre is it agreeing with Chris that it needs to be refurbished, but that's something we need to take up with Network Rail. So I believe it's, I know Swell do clean it, but I believe it's owned by Network Rail. Thanks. So, um, but if we can maybe push the cleaning on a more regular basis to stop the unpleasant smells, and then hopefully then the actual refurbishment works will be uh, processed as appropriate with time and money. Okay, if you can, take some photographs not uh, of the um, repairs that need to be done down there or refurbishment that needs to be done and then I'll work in conjunction with the town clerk about writing to um, Network Rail about um, asking them to improve um, the, uh, the subway. Also do let me know if there's any issues with um, getting the borough council to resolve the, uh, uh, the cleaning um, down in the subway and uh, I, I'm 
happy to chase that up as well. I mean, I, I, I've, um, they, they generally, I mean, when, when sometimes the bin on the mouse side gets quite full and then that blows some rubbish in and generally if it's reported, it's cleaned up pretty quickly, almost on that same day. And I think, as Adam said, that, that unfortunately, particularly recently, there's been some quite unpleasant waste uh, down there, which um, which is good to hear that they're going to kind of cleanse it a bit more. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, I'll keep an eye on that. If I see anything, I'll um, keep reporting it. Or... Just to clarify then, uh, Adam, you're trying to get the Borough Council to confirm that they've got a, a, a regular cleaning schedule for the subway. I've requested that they part of the cleaning schedule is a jet wash. Yeah, it needs washing out. It can't just uh, it's not fair for the man just to turn up, pick up no. the rubbish because it needs, especially if it's human waste, it needs uh, proper chemicals and cleaning properly. It's unfair to ask someone without he's got it doesn't carry water with him. No. So did it's you, not appropriate. Did you email the, the borough council? I, I emailed uh, Leanne at swell because i haven't got any contacts for biffa and can, I you, think it's... can you share me that uh, uh forward that uh, that email on to me okay uh, and then yeah. I'll, I'll follow it up for you okay thank you uh council saunders I, as as an aob item i just want to briefly mention the um cycle fest um that we're running uh, largely as a virtual event at the moment although we did we had a meeting about it yesterday where we did discuss that we might be able to run some appointment um, type act activities. Uh, I'm raising it really because it, it fall, uh, in encouraging people to cycle falls really between this committee, to a certain extent the Environment Committee and the 20s Plenty Committee that have all got uh, an interest. But the, basically the aim of the Cycle Fest is to encourage people to cycle and uh, to run activities which will um, yeah, encourage people to get bikes mended and to give them more confidence to go on the road and so on. Um, there may be some costs associated with, with that, so it may be something that this committee might want to consider whether it, it, it would allocate funding towards the, uh, the cycle fest. So that's, yeah, just reporting back up on that and it may be that um having an item on it at the next uh, public spaces committee would be good is it are you able or is it worth uh, you bring your proposal for what funding might be required to the next um, committee meeting or is that too soon um no i think that that is a possibility i mean the the uh, myself and chris and louise are the people who are primarily yeah. working on it so i'm sure we could bring something something back and kind of identify for the next meeting whether there is any expenditure that we might need support with. Yeah, because that'll be good for this year and in next year's budget yeah. as well, if need be. Yeah, I agree, that's good. Councillor Thomas, could yes, I, can I just come in? Um, can we just all please note that actually Mike Knowles tried to get into the meeting, but he couldn't. He could only uh, watch it live. Um, so he has sent me an email, which I will send out to everybody, just giving uh, um, updates on some yellow lines. Um, but also, I think we need to recognise that Chris Oswald Jones couldn't get into the meeting either uh, and has been listening. And Adam struggled to get in. So I just thought. Um, it's worth pointing that out. Can I just ask for um, once you've had a chance to investigate a bit further, give me uh, if you can provide some feedback on whether or not Teams is providing uh, is proving to be too awkward uh, to run these meetings. Um, uh, oh. The issue is sorry, I think the issue is with Alan as well. Trying to get Alan in to the meetings, um, but yeah, if you can let me know. Um, well, I'd be interested to know further what Mike Knowles' problem was. I, it was unusual that he can't get in because I know, I know Kent uh, um, likes to use uh, Teams, and I know the Borough Council are moving towards using Teams more. Um, so yeah, um, keep, keep me updated. That'd be be great, and then we can figure out what the best. Maybe we can do a, a practice um, session, see if we can get. Uh, uh, Chris into a, uh, a another meeting to find out uh, what the technical problem is. 
yeah we've we've tried practice sessions but um we're not really getting there with with teams unfortunately yeah. okay um okay uh we'll we'll leave that there then and we'll have to look into that i'll catch up with you on that one uh louise okay thank you all i'm going to uh close the uh meeting now thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you.